But what is up? Welcome back to another video. I am thoroughly exhausted. I went down to see some family this past weekend and I was driving back yesterday. And it's like a again, five hour drive. So it's like not that, it's not that far, but man, I'm just, I'm wiped from it. So I've got the backup coffee mug here today, um, lead free. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's just get into it. Kodak is raising their film price on certain film stocks, such as Kodak Gold, their Ektar, and I think Portra 160, which would be the three films that they make that I really like. So cool. Don't feel attacked by this information at all. But gold primarily in the uh, 120 is the stock that's being raised, which I think is... Um, Funny is not the right word, but funny, I guess, because that was, you know, originally marketed to be like, oh, this is going to be our new, you know, budget film. Even if you have a penny to your name, you can afford this Kodak Gold 120 film. And uh, now they're raising the price on it, which is cool. I think it's just, you know, great. Film continues to be a very expensive and goofy hobby to get into. And I think them continually raising their prices continues to uh, prove that point. I think it'd be really cool if they just didn't, if they just didn't do that. And uh, I don't know. I feel like in, in, I don't know, maybe I'm, I don't have like an economics degree. I don't have, I, th I took one economics class, but it was like, I graduated high school early, so I took the economics class online over the course of like two weeks, basically, uh, after the end of like my school day. I had like a after school computer class thing where I took an economics course, so I'm not the professional here, but I was at the store the other day and shit is so expensive there. I'm just thinking like, I'm not buying a lot of stuff here. I'm not buying a lot of stuff at the store. I'm not buying a lot of stuff anywhere because everything is so expensive. I feel like if the prices were lowered, I would be inclined to buy something or buy more of something. But when the prices are high, I buy nothing. And maybe that's just me. I, like I could be completely wrong about this, but like I feel like if the prices were lower, I would buy more of that thing. But instead, it's like, I don't want to buy that thing because it's very expensive. Does that make sense? I don't know. That was just a thought that I had. So I'm very uncaffeinated. So I could be completely talking out of my ass. Uh, Freestyle Photo, which is a company I use regularly to get my film from, they had a five pack of Kodak Pro Image 100 for sale. And it was like, it's like 10 bucks off because I think the expiration date was coming up or something like that. Like it was pretty, it was a great deal for five rolls of film. And I've never shot Pro Image 100 because it's always like kind of comparable in price to Ultra Max or to Gold or other stocks that I know that I like shooting. So it's like, yeah, I don't really want to spend that money on a film that I'm unsure about when I can spend roughly the same money on something I like. But because of the sale, I bought a five pack of Pro Image 100. And I actually shot with that this weekend in a camera that I will be talking about in a later video this week. And then that kind of leads to the next point of, I only released the one video last week because it was kind of a hectic week wrapping stuff up and getting ready to go down the coast. But I do have a bunch ready to go. So I'll be releasing probably another video later today and or first thing tomorrow. And then another one on Wednesday, Thursday, so on and so forth. So definitely gonna make up for content lost last week. Got some good stuff in the works, so make sure to subscribe and all that jazz so you don't miss out. Um, but back to the film stocks raising up and stuff. I think raising the price of Ektar is insane behavior because it's already really expensive to shoot that, but I don't know, I guess, that was kind of my thought when they're talking about Fuji, you know, maybe not producing film as much anymore. It's like, well, this is what happens. Like a company now has like a relatively monopoly status over an industry. They can just do whatever they want because who's going to combat that? You know, no, nobody can. In other news, we have a few other like film things to talk about. 
first off, I want to shout out my buddy John again uh, because he's the best. But also, he told me the Kodak news when we were on like a little walkabout uh, the other day, which was great fun. And then secondly, he hooked me up with a roll of Candido film, and I shot it this past weekend as well in my Nikon F3. I'm going to send it out to get developed today, so hopefully have some results soon and do like a little piece on that. The Candido film is kind of similar to the Cinestill Reflex Labs, where it's like the recanned, reused uh, cinema film. So I feel like I kind of know what it's going to look like, but I still want to do a good review of it and talk about the product because maybe it's something that you're interested in. I did get some uh, Reflex Labs film back a couple weeks ago, and... I'm stoked to talk about it. I might have that ready by next week, but anyway, that was just a, a thing that I'm jazzed about. Instagram. Ooh. Okay. So there's been a couple of things that have come up recently regarding Instagram. Uh, primarily their subtle, not so subtle uh, taking of people's content to use to train their like AI. I've gotten into a couple conversations about that because I find it to be a fascinating discussion. Um, my opinion on AI, and I feel like I've talked about it so much, I don't know if I've talked about it on this channel, but I just find AI to be fascinating because here it is, um, this computing system that's kind of would be best suited to make decisions based upon incoming data sets, right? So here are the numbers, yes, no kind of thing. And if you ask me, that sounds like the perfect uh, thing to replace an executive. You know, these high paying board members, these high paying like titans of industries and stuff that really at the end of the day is kind of like rubber stamp stuff. And I think it's, it's just baffling to me how like, Instead of the most clear cut and concise fit for AI, they're like, no, you know what we should do? It's these same people that would like effectively have their jobs taken by robots. They're like, we should really cut out the, the cost of artists, cut out the cost of creators, and just train AI to steal all their stuff and um, garble it up and spit it out back out again. That's what we'll do instead. Like, let's... It, like, <laughs> Let's use this monumental piece of technology and undercut a business that has been historically struggling from lack of funding, lack of all this stuff. I just find it to be very funny that that is the approach. Funny is not the right word again, but very interesting that that's the approach when I feel like AI would be so good at... <laughs> You know, any of these like leadership or company management roles, not to say like, oh, eat the rich or whatever, but just like, just in my mind, that's what makes the most sense. Um, I also view AI kind of in the same vein as like NFTs or crypto. It's like a buzzword that gets people like interested in projects. I don't know how long this span will last, but I think for the time being, the whole like AI is going to steal all your work. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't view that as... Um, inherently realistic at this stage. Anyway, I might talk about this more in a future video, but that was just kind of like the basis of my understanding on AI. And then moving forward to that, when Meta is kind of underhandedly taking your stuff and thrown into the fucking AI shit without really any consent whatsoever, I have a few conflicted feelings towards that. On one hand, I think the basis of understanding is that if you're using any kind of system or software or whatever for free, there is some level of price to be paid for that. And while I don't think that that's necessarily fair, I think that that's kind of, I'm not entirely shocked. I'm not defending them. But I'm not like, wow, this is shocking behavior from a very large company that has previously shown very little concern for its consumers. Oh my God. I'm just like, yeah, that, that tracks. Like that, that to me just makes, like it just makes sense. Um, but flip side of that, I think it's pretty fucking lame, to be honest. And then the other thing too is like, I guess I have to like temper that a little bit because I don't really think that any of the things I've posted on Instagram 
ever really could be categorized or could amount to anything qualifying as like precious artwork that cannot be stolen or replicated but that doesn't mean that that's the case for everybody i think people put fantastic stuff on instagram i just don't view my stuff as that same so i guess i don't feel like that ardent uh frustration or fear with that announcement because i'm just like yeah it's my fucking stupid pictures if the ai wants to munch on that like it's your waste of time i guess but there are some people that put a lot of good work out there like their livelihood stuff to get out there to a wider audience and to rob them of that for the sake of the ai is very weird there is a way you can opt out of the ai system but i guess if you're an american user um, you basically have to prove that your work has already been stolen and then from there you can say hey i don't want to do this so again i think very lame but kind of par for the course unfortunately and not that that's okay I'm not saying like, ah, you know, fucking let them, let boys be boys. Let them fucking, you know, like, what are we going to do? Like, let them, let them, let them cook. But it's just like, that makes sense. That tracks. Um, I don't know. My relationship with Instagram has uh, completely deteriorated. I tried posting some stuff and I was just like, Ugh. like, what am I doing here? Like, it's so like i don't know i get why people do it it makes complete sense i just think from like the stuff i do like the pictures i take like it's just they're not instagram worthy like i'm just taking pictures for fun um i don't know i'll probably do something different uh i just i haven't really thought about it but with the whole this thing popping up and like now people are talking about the kava Kara is allegedly, or Kara, I think it's Kara. Kara sounds better than Kara, but I think Kara is supposed to be this new um, platform in which you can kind of curate your feed. You can like um, see the posts from people you want to see and share work without worry of it being stolen from you by the manufacturer of the platform. And I think the person who made it's like an artist, so they like have some level of understanding regarding the whole situation, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know if that like that's the solution. I think that jumping from one app to the next isn't necessarily the solution, but uh, like 500,000 people left Instagram for Kara like a couple weeks ago, so not looking too hot but i still think like if you want to have any level of impact with your art like instagram's the way to go because it's being used by so many people and like cars for artists like if you're sharing your art amongst artists that's fantastic but uh if you want to get it out to a wider audience something like instagram is kind of a necessary evil so that being said i do think that there should be some investigation into the morality of the whole like whoops all our content for the meta thing but i don't i don't know if that's gonna happen there's typically i feel like very little oversight uh in systems like this which is why i think ai would be great to replace executives because they would just make the decision and be like oh that's bad or whatever i don't know i just think any level of communication or oversight it would be uh, a better alternative to nothing but yeah that that's it um nothing too crazy i did get some more film i think i mentioned that i got some more film shop this weekend which is cool i'm stoked about a couple of videos i have coming out i have another uh, spotmatic repair video to hopefully replace the one i posted a very long time ago because i don't like that video so i've got another one that's hopefully going to be more uh, usable it's going to be a two-parter i believe uh, just because it's very long and then i'll have some other fun stuff out there. So I think that's it for now. Nothing too crazy news wise, nothing positive really, to be honest. I'm tired, Kodak's raising their prices, Instagram blows. And um, I think I, I got a really bad sunburn on my neck, but I did get a haircut, so that's cool. I look, I look a little bit more employed. Um, hey. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> all right uh that's all thank you for watching oh i also got a rug 
I've got a rug I'm standing on. It's really comfy. Well, I'm fucking talking about that. I'm just like barefoot on this rug, so I'm thinking about it. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it as always. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. All that good stuff. Catch you on the next one.